Ferris Hall McCollum. I'm sitting here with my dad, Dudley Hall, and you're joining us for an episode of Papa, I Have a Question. This is where I get to sit down with my dad and just ask questions, questions that I'm wrestling with, whether it's what do I do in life? What's the meaning of life? Um, how, what does this scripture mean? What does this theological term mean? I realized that growing up with a great Bible teacher and theologian, I have had the privilege and the great opportunity that when I'm wrestling with something, um, when I don't understand something, I've always had a great resource. And so I could just say, hey, I don't understand this. Papa, help me here. What does this mean? Um, I heard this in a sermon or I read this in uh, my own Bible study or whatever. And um, as an educator, I know that when one person has a question, there's usually someone else who has that same question. So we decided to invite you guys into some of our conversations where I just simply say, I don't get it. Papa, I have a question. Oh, what's up today? Okay, so this one, um, <clears throat> this might be combining several of the things that we've talked about. So um, a couple of weeks ago when we were talking, you talked about just the sovereignty of God, that you wish you had understood that more. You wish you had known that it's not all on your shoulders. It's not up to you. You can't thwart the, the plans of God. Mm. And I've been trying to chew on that. and Like, okay, I, I need to uh, to settle in and I need to trust his sovereignty more and not think that I have to fix everything or that I can fix anything. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I know that I am called to be his partner, right? Like that, that is our commission is to partner with him. Yeah. So what is my responsibility? What do I do? What am I responsible for as I try to partner with him, uh, to accomplish his his purposes. Yeah, well, that's a big question that we all live with all the time yeah. because life changes. But yeah, full disclosure, Karis, you should tell them that actually most of the time you didn't come in and go, Pop, I have a question. You came <laughs> in and flopped down in my lap in my chair when I was trying to read. It's true. Papa had a big, like, lazy boy type chair, and he would usually have a newspaper or a magazine or the Bible. I mean, I've ruined several pages in Bibles. <laughs> and uh, so I would just kind of come to the side of it and just, like, sit down in his lap. And I usually didn't have to say, Papa, I have a question, because he kind of knew, okay, she's got yeah. something to talk about. Yeah. Uh, okay. How do how do we address that? Because uh, we can't do what what God has done, and He <laughs> He's done it a lot. Right. In fact, everything that uh, everything's ever happened was initiated by God. Yeah. He created. Creation. We we, we we didn't ask for that. Yeah. He created. Uh, all the covenants in the Bible, God initiated. The one thing that's common about all the covenants, whether it's with Noah or Abraham or David or Moses or the New Covenant, whatever, God God did it. Started them. Yeah, mm -hmm. God did it. Uh, and so we need to remember that God started this thing. Mm -hmm. That's why Paul was able to say, "I'm I'm convinced that He is able to keep that which." I've committed to him against that day. What God starts, he's going to finish. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good to know. That is good to know. So I don't think we believe that, though. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah. It's hard. I mean, we could believe it. I know. Uh, yeah, so, you know, if you just want a quick answer, it is this. I do. I want a quick answer that I can check off my box. What do I do? <laughs> Give me a list. Uh, living in the new covenant after the finished work of Christ, where mm -hmm. all our sins have been forgiven. We don't need to make any more sacrifices. Right. Uh, and living in this era, we are the temple. We are living stones in the temple. So I don't have to go anywhere to get to God. Mm -hmm. I don't have to change locale. Uh, his covenant is written in my heart. Mm -hmm. I don't have to go dig up the covenant and see what's in the book, and, you know, whatever. Read the law and Read try the law to fulfill it. Mm -hmm. So he's, 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 he's finished a lot. 
there's some things we're waiting on mm-hmm. that that are working through uh, leaven's working through the through the lump of dough. We're waiting on a resurrected body. We're waiting on waiting on a restored creation. Mm-hmm. We're waiting on final judgment for all injustices to be righted and whatever. So some things we're waiting on. But in the meantime, we are, well, let's say like this. <clears throat> God chose Adam and Eve to be his human representatives in the garden. Yep. He chose Noah to be his representative in the flood. He chose Abraham to be his representative in producing a seed that would reverse the curse. And make a great nation. Yeah, and make a great nation. Yeah. So he chose you know, Israel to be that nation that through, uh, through which he fulfilled his mission to bless the world. The whole world. You know, Israel was chosen to bless the world. Um, Moses was chosen to create that nation with, with the, Sinaitic, uh, the covenant at Sinai. And then David was God's representative as a king. Mm-hmm. And uh, then ultimately, Jesus is, is the representative. And then he ascends and sends his Holy Spirit back. But before he, before he ascends, he says to the disciples, my mission is going to continue. What God, is, what God has started, he is going to finish. And he is, he is going to, to redeem and restore everything that sin effaced, everything that sin messed up. So the way we're going to do that is you're going to carry on the mission that I started. Okay. Okay. So like, you know, most, most of you who've studied the scripture know that Luke wrote the gospel of Luke and then Luke wrote Acts. And so Luke says, and this is the beginning of what Jesus did. Acts, this is the continuation of what Jesus did. Yep. He's gone In the now. church. Yeah. So he's, he's left the, left, uh, his people are the church, the people of God, and he is continuing on in that mission. So we know that our job is to reflect the uh, the completed work of Christ and uh, the heart of God to bless the world, not to curse the world. So, I love that word reflect. I think mm-hmm. that's really significant because a reflector doesn't even have a light bulb in it. A reflector right. is doing no work. Yeah. It's not, there's no energy, there's no electricity, there's no, a reflecti- a reflector is just receiving yeah. the light from something else and that light bounces off. So that's such a great word picture that we are reflectors yeah. of him. And it's true though, because his law is written in our heart. My heart just comes out sometimes without me trying to think, you know, mm. I mean, if I see somebody in need or. Mm-hmm. You know, I, you know, for me, if I see a a child that's not being fathered or or not being taken care of, not being loved, you know, I, I can't help it. Mm-hmm. It's not like God told me you better do that. It's like mm-hmm. I I can't help it. Mm-hmm. I just I want them to know that they're loved, and I want them to know they belong, and so forth. And you know, every leader's like that. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that, that's why. If you have been forgiven, you can't help but forgive. Mm-hmm. Eventually, you're going to get around to forgiving. You may fight it and mm-hmm. whatever, but eventually, why? Because you're a reflector. God's already, he's already put the light inside of you. Now it's just got to come out. So That's so good. Yeah. But I was just, you know, getting back to the simplicity of it. There's two things that we do. Okay. I like it. <laughs> Give me my checklist. What are my two things? They're big. Okay. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, we pray and we obey. Mm. A great part of the partnership we have with God is God says, I, I want, you're, my, you're my man on earth. You're my representative. You get in the situations where darkness is taken over and light needs to go. You get in that, you know you can't do it on your own, but you're there. You're my boy. Mm-hmm. So what you do is you you pray that you pray down heaven. You get heaven to come. Mm-hmm. So the book of Revelation, 
the picture of prayer in the book of Revelation in chapter four and five primarily. As John looks into heaven and he sees the throne and all of that, and he sees this incense going up. And the angel takes the incense and mixes it with fire from the altar of God in, in the heavenlies and flings it back to earth. And when it comes into earth, it comes back as thunder and lightning and earthquakes. And he explains it to, to, to John. Those incense are the prayers of the saints. Mm -hmm. That's a good picture. Mm -hmm. I send up the incense. I'm basically going, help. Mm -hmm. Here's a situation I don't want to do. What do you want to do here? I send it up to him. He mixes it with the fire from the altar, the, the refining fire of God, the purifying fire. He mixes it with his will. He mixes it with God's order, God's agenda. It'll be on his time. It'll be on his way. He mixes it and he flings it back to earth. When it comes back, it uh, can be dramatic. Sounds, maybe that's the word of God. I, I don't know. A lightning, uh, that insight, revelation, I don't know. Earthquakes, that's shaking things up. Yeah. That's saying, I'm bigger than this created order. Mm -hmm. So so prayer is a part of what we do. And yet our prayer is not so much to control God as it is to basically say, I'm here now in the middle of this situation and you are my source and my wisdom. And so I'm asking you to intervene here. And then you obey as best you know how out of the desires of your heart, out of what you know is is consistent with the mission that you've called to do, mm -hmm. you, you obey. And, you know, it's never, at least, let's well, say never, it's hardly ever as clear-cut as you wish it were. Exactly. It's like, exactly. okay, I'll obey, but exactly what do you want? What does that look like? Yeah. Yeah. Is obeying doing this? Is obeying doing that? I don't know. And uh, he, he will give enough light for us to, to act. And my comfort is this. Okay, if in a heart to obey, I mess up, mm -hmm. I think he's going to have a little grace. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, I, I'm trying to obey here. This is what I thought obedience was like. And he's like, no, that wasn't it. Okay. Okay, show me. Yeah, show me. Yeah. Because... You're not loving me based on how well I did. You're based, you, you love me because you can't help it. Mm -hmm. So pray and obey. Pray and obey. And do it again. <laughs> True. <laughs> Lather, rinse, repeat, right? Yeah, right. Pray, obey, <clears throat> repeat. That's good. It sounds simple, but it's not. That's big. Yeah, it's big. It's big. Yeah, it, it is simple, but it's big. It's, it's real big. big. Yeah. yeah. That's good. Thanks, Papa. And thank you for joining us for Papa, I Have a Question. Send me your questions and I'll ask Papa.